In the name of Jesus, good morning. morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord, and we pray God's blessing on us as we gather around his word and his meal. We've got a commandment in the readings today that's on your bulletin cover that's uh, <clears throat> while sort of popular for a few number of years, often gets overlooked after those years. And that's part of the challenge of the text today is it uh, hits us square in the face. So <clears throat> we get to look at uh, the commandments. Uh, and particularly, I want to focus on that word honor. I think that's a word that we need to recover a little bit in our lives and times. So uh, the Lord has some things to say about that, and we will look for that in our readings and our hymns this morning. I'm losing my microphone. Is there any announcements or prayer requests this morning? Okay. You've heard already uh, some of those phrases from the opening hymn. Uh, One of those Luther hymns where he wrote 10 or 12 verses to it. We're going to just do a few selected verses. Uh, Salvation unto us has come. Uh, It's the story of uh, Christ and why he comes among us.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism, you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, I love the habitation of your house. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. Prove me, O Lord, and try me. I wash my hands in innocence and go around your altar, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O Lord, I love the habitation of your house. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. To God on high be glory and peace to all the earth. Good will from God in heaven proclaimed at Jesus' birth. We praise and bless you, Father, your holy name we sing. Our thanks for your great glory, Lord God, our heavenly King. To you, O soul begotten, the Father's Son, we pray. O Lamb of God, our Savior, you'll take our sins away. Have mercy on us, Jesus. Receive our heartfelt cry. Where you in power are seated, at God's right hand on high. For you alone are holy, you only are the Lord. Forever and forever be worshipped and adored. You with the Holy Spirit Alone, our Lord Most High, in God the Father's glory, Amen, our glad reply. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, Defend your church from all false teaching and error that your faithful people may confess you to be the only true God and rejoice in your good gifts of life and salvation. 
Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the 14th Sunday after Pentecost is from the 29th chapter of Isaiah. The vision of all this has become to you like the words of a book that is sealed. When men give it to one who can read, saying, read this, he says, I cannot, for it is sealed. And when they give the book to one who cannot read, saying, read this, He says, I cannot read. And the Lord said, because this people draw near with their mouth and honor me with their lips, while their hearts are far from me and their fear of me is a commandment taught by men, therefore behold, I will again do wonderful things with this people, with wonder upon wonder. And the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the discernment of their discerning men shall be hidden. Ah, you who hide deep from the Lord your counsel, whose deeds are in the dark, and who say, Who sees us? Who knows us? You turn things upside down. Shall the potter be regarded as the clay that the thing made should say of its maker, He did not make me? Or the thing formed say of him who formed it, he has no understanding? Is it not yet a very little while until Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field, and the fruitful field shall be regarded as a forest? In that day the deaf shall hear the words of a book, and out of their gloom and darkness the eyes of the blind shall see. The meek shall obtain fresh joy in the Lord, and the poor among mankind shall exult in the Holy One of Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Fear the Lord, you his saints. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. The epistle reading is from the fifth chapter of Ephesians. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church because we are members of his body. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound, and I am saying that it refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. These things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. 
Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the seventh chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Pharisees gathered to Jesus with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that some of his disciples ate with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. For the Pharisees and all the Jews who do not eat unless they wash their hands, holding to the traditions of the elders, and when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other traditions that they observe, such as the washing of cups and pots and copper vessels and dining couches. And the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? And he said to them, Well did Isaiah prophesy of you, hypocrites, as it is written, this people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. You leave the commandment of God and hold to the traditions of men. And he said to them, you have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your tradition. For Moses said, honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, if a man tells his father or mother whatever you would have gained from me as Corban, that is given to God, then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother, thus making void the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down. And many such things you do. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Let us confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, dear Christian friends. Sometimes we as human beings get distracted. <laughs> and one of those uh, rabbit holes I've gone down before is this. You look at the Ten Commandments, eight of them all have the word no or not in it, or do not, yeah. And only two of them have been stated in the positive case. Um, I had one teacher ed class and the professor was saying it's really important that you tell the kids what to do not what not to do you know so if you want the kids to uh, stay on the sidewalk rather than run into the street you don't say don't run into the street because they miss the word don't and they run into the street right It's kind of a little bit of a tangent there to think about it. Why are there eight commandments that are in the negative and only two in the positive? But then you can give this one consideration, I think, that is worthwhile. Often, we hear the commandments and imagine that we can do them <laughs> rather than that we don't. And yet, truth be told, is that we break all the commandments. Even this one that's kind of featured on the bulletin cover today is one that none of us have kept perfectly. Honor your father and your mother. There may be some of you who say, well, my father and mother are dead. Well, are they now not worth honor? Or perhaps you're thinking, well, I am over 18, this commandment no longer applies. Well, guess what? Jesus was talking to the Pharisees and the scribes, those church leaders that seemed to be in control, and he squares right at them. You have a fine way of rejecting God's word. Moses, the Bible says, honor your father and mother, but you say, if it's a gift to the church, then you don't have to do anything for your parents. That sounds like such an honorable thing to give a gift to the church. It kind of hurts me particularly because my parents are so far away and I tell them, well, I'm serving the church. I can't really help you out. But isn't it true that sometimes we try to imagine things that we can do and pretend like they're really important and holy things rather than just listening to what God says? Jesus hits us right in the face here. You're rejecting God. This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. What does this mean? He is not talking about a certain emotional level that you have to attain at worship in order to be the right type of worshiper. We have other scriptures that say, with the mouth you confess and with the heart you believe. What's Jesus getting at here is, do you believe the word of God? Do you live like the word of God is truth? Is the scriptures more important than your tradition? 
Can God say what is good, right, and salutary? And you believe that more than what you've made up for your own. If you go to that Old Testament lesson, he makes that picture with a potter and clay. Does clay say to the potter, you're pretty stupid? You know, I know how the pot really ought to work. I ought to have this honor. I ought to have this glory. God says the wisdom of man is foolishness. The discernment of man is folly compared to his word and his promise. We might make up all kinds of things that seem holy and righteous in our sight. But we have to weigh it with God's word. He's the one who created us. He's the one who has plans for us. He's the one who sets us apart, who gives us gifts, who gives us talents and looks for us to do the things that he has done for us. He is our maker. Honoring God from the heart is believing that he is our maker, that his plans are good and true. We dare not void the word of God by our traditions. And we hear that and that makes sense. Do we really take it to heart? What was the most important thing this morning as you're getting ready? I got to get my clothes right. I got to be on time. I got to look this way or that way. I want this person or that person to be there. Are these the reasons we come to church? To show off my clean shoes and socks? Or do I come to honor God? Those two commandments that have positive phrases are this, honor your father and your mother and remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So if you go to the verbs, the actions that you're supposed to do in these positive commandments, they are honor, remember, keep. Those aren't very impressive verbs. <laughs> We like to create or give or stand or attain. Those are the verbs that we think are big deal verbs. God says, honor, remember, keep. And I think those Positive verbs go together. What does he mean by honor? He means remember. He means keep what I have said about them close to your heart. Have you ever heard the words Mom, you don't understand me. Maybe coming from your own mouth. <laughs> Maybe that of your kids or your grandkids. How can this be? Because we get this false belief that our narrative of the world is more important or more real, more true than what God has given and God has said. We 
we make void the word of God by our own selfish intimations. We're like a clay, a clay pot trying to tell the potter how to do things. That's our fallen nature that gets out of whack. It's the same nature that listens to that epistle lesson and gets tied up on the second word and can't listen to any of the rest of the lesson. <laughs> but did you know that that reading from Ephesians was even by word count mostly about Jesus? Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its savior. The church submits to Christ. Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy without blemish. Christ loves the church and are members of his body. This mystery is profound, and I'm talking about Christ and the church. Is that what you heard the first time? It's there. But we have this natural tendency to hear something and say, wait a second, that's not my way. I got this figured out. What's he doing here? Trying to mess with me. There's a scripture that says marriage is to be held in honor by all. What does it mean? to honor marriage. Sometimes in marriage, there's different of opinions. We should do it this way. We should do it that way. What's the honorable way? If you're a lump of clay, you say, oh, they're stupid and it should be my way. But if it's a heart of faith who's heard about Jesus and the forgiveness of sins, we can see this cleansing, this sanctification, getting rid of spot and wrinkles, holding together, becoming one. There's honor in hearing God's word, in believing God's word, and putting it to practice in our lives. Speaking kindly, making more of others than self. Honor. It's an interesting word. The roots of the word talk about having a substance or a gravity or a weight to them in kind of the, uh, low level explanation, explanation the person that has more weight in gold has more honor than the person that has less weight in gold <laughs> it 
How do you apply that to the commandment? How do we honor father and mother? How do we honor the Lord's day? Remembering his promise, keeping it holy. We give it its proper weight, its proper importance. Why do we get ready to go to church? Why do we try to get there on time? Because the Lord is there. Because his word is spoken. If you go through John's gospel and you look at what Jesus talks about, his mission and the role that he has there, you can't miss it. He says, I'm here to do my Father's will. I'm here to honor my Father. The Father has sent me. I want you to believe that the Father has sent me. Jesus honors the Father. Jesus submitted to the Father's will, even to the point where he had to say, not my will, but thine be done. Jesus went the way of the cross, taking on death and despair, pain and misery, so that we might be free of the curse. Jesus has the honor of the name that is above every name, the glory that is beyond this world, the one who has defeated death, the one who has listened to the Father and kept his word, remembered his way and his purpose through the cross, past the grave, back to the sky, where he says, I go to prepare Prepare a place for you, an honored place in my Father's house. What's our challenge with honor? Either the little ways we're distracted to other things, or just our own plain sinful self that thinks we're more important than God. What's the answer to these things? Jesus, his body, his blood for you, for the forgiveness of sins. We come to the table, we come to his rail to honor him. to believe his word, to receive the gifts that he gave us, to live the lives that he would have us live, to be children of God, to honor him with our lips, but also with our heart, with our lives of faith. He did make me And even though it's hard for me at some times to hear, his word breaks through. And though it's hard for me to see, sometimes his truth shines forth. He has come that we might have fresh joy in the Lord and see Jesus without spot or wrinkle, the Holy One of Israel, the one who's come for you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs.
Almighty God, to whom all hearts are known, grant us a true faith that we would honor you not only with our lips, but also in worship, doctrine, and lives of faith. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, you call men into the office of the ministry to be shepherds to your sheep. Grant your wisdom to those who guide your church. Matthew Harrison, our synod president. Michael Von Baron, our district president. Kevin Schuchnagel, our circuit visitor. Don Stoltz, our pastor. And all the servants of the church. Keep them steadfast in the faith so that they do not set forth as divine truth those things that are only human traditions, but rather teach your word with honesty and clarity. Lord, in your mercy, almighty God, preserve us from rejecting your commandments for the doctrines of men. By your Spirit's aid, lead all Christians to keep your commandments in thought, word, and deed, honoring you in all that we do. Lord, in your mercy, Almighty God, preserve the honorable estate of marriage. Grant that wives would submit to their husbands as to the Lord, and that husbands would love their wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, hear our prayers for our nation and its leaders, for all civil servants, and for those who work, whose work imperils them for the sake of their neighbor. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, in his earthly ministry, your son healed the sick and comforted the hurting. Grant healing and peace to those taking treatments, to the ill or injured, to the lonely and imprisoned, and to all in need of our prayers, including Sandy Walker, Marlene Wilson, Ron Wampler, and Pastor Richard Flath, that in meekness each hurting heart would obtain fresh joy in your son and exalt in you, Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, strengthen the faith and sustain the life to everlasting. All who partake in the fellowship of this altar and receive Christ's body and blood this day in the Holy Communion. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray. Trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessing you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him in his death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth with full acclaim, Shout the glory of your name. Sing Hosanna in the highest. Sing Hosanna to the Lord. Truly blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Lord, teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This too as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. O Jesus Christ, true Lamb of God, you take the sin of the world away. O Jesus Christ, true Lamb of God, have mercy on us, Lord.
O Lord, now let your servant depart in heavenly peace, for I have seen the glory of your redeeming grace, a light to lead the Gentiles unto your holy hill. The glory of your people, your chosen Israel. All glory to the Father, all glory to the Son, all glory to the Spirit, forever three in one. For as in the beginning is now shall ever be, God's triumph name resounding through all eternity. We pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.